and welcome to another episode of this tiny little podcast. Um, not a whole lot to talk to you about this week. Um, a whole lot of knitting on things that just take time. Knitting takes time. Who knew? Uh, first off, I showed you this last week uh, when it was straight off the needles. Now it's washed. And it is the Rosa Parks by Cassie Knits on Instagram. And I think that's her Ravelry name as well. And with my milkmaid braids and the lipstick, it looks vintagey, but this is. Well, it is vintage because it's named after Rosa Parks, and I'm guessing there's a reason for that. <laughs> now, modifications to the pattern. I put the pattern on both the front and the back. The pattern only has you do it on the front, but I figured why not put it on both sides? Um, I know there is the whole, oh look, a surprise interest in the front, but it's just, it's such a simple pattern that I th thought, well, I preferred the look on both the front and the back. I could have done the uh, sleeves as well, but I decided not to, mainly because I didn't want to figure out how to um, shift the stitches so that it actually fit. I was lazy. What else? Uh, the yarn is Lana Gato Eiffel, which may or may not be discontinued. I don't know. The shop where I bought it doesn't sell it anymore, but she doesn't sell well, she does sell some Lana Gatto. I don't know. It's an Italian brand. Uh, it is a yak blend. So, yeah. Oh, and other mods, I only did half sleeves. Because I ran out of yarn. Uh, this actually weighs in at 202 grams. And I have a small bit left over. Um, which isn't really useful for anything, but it also means that my skeins were overweight, it seems. So yeah, four skeins of uh, fingering weight yarn. No, not fingering weight. I don't remember what the weight was. I will stand up and show you that I am actually doing sort of um, Winnie the Pooh cosplay but make it vintage. Because I am wearing my uh, Pietro pants in this stretchy velvet. So yeah, <laughs> it is pretty much Winnie the Pooh cosplay, but make it vintage. But I like these colours and I think they look good together. So um no new finished objects of any kind. I know. It's been it's been a week with a lot of knitting, but the issue being, as I said, knitting takes time. So even though I had a full day Tuesday where all of our networks were down and we couldn't actually work. I could log into the system, I could receive mails, but I couldn't do anything. It just, nothing was working. And when I called IT support a little after seven, um, they opened at seven, the guy was already tired of saying, we know that's an issue, we don't know what the issue is, other than our networks being down. So, too bad about that. 
I spent the day knitting instead. And this is my Criterion um, by Wool and Pine. I was missing the last bit of the... For some reason I didn't put in a marker. But I was missing the last bit of the colour work last week. As you can see I'm knit beyond that. I've actually knit a fair bit beyond that. I have just started row number 3, 2, 12, 14, 16, 17 since dividing the uh, sleeves and body. I have shifted it around a bit so that the back of the jumper is actually has fewer uh, stitches than the front. The pattern has you do an equal amount. And I didn't go down a needle size when I switched from the color work. Um, even though my color work is tighter than my other knitting, but yeah. Didn't didn't really feel like it and it works out anyway from shifting stitches around, adding some more to the sleeves and so on. I'm not totally sure about how this might be a bit tight. This won't. The body won't, but the colour work part might be a bit tight. I don't know. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe it won't. Uh, but yeah, I am going to make this keep popping off stitches, but since this is uh, Fino by Alma, I just realized that Never mind. Sorry. That wasn't really necessary for you. Um, but yeah, it is a toothy yarn, so even if I accidentally, which I have done before, pull out the needle, I can just pick everything up again because it won't really have shifted unless you pull on it. Um, and I just noticed that I have a stitch which I only partially caught. There we go. And we're back. Sorry about that. I just knew it would bug me if I noticed later that I'd split the stitch um, and I hadn't caught it in the next round. But yeah. This colour work ended up using less than a skein of the contrast colour and these are 50 gram skeins with 175 metres. Um, I haven't weighed the remaining skein to figure out how much I've used. I will do that before, before the end. Let's show you the back. So, yeah. As you can tell, I did a lot of knitting. I am on row 70. I am going to make this a total of 42 centimeters long. There's 5 centimeters of ribbing, meaning I need to get this to 37 centimeters. And that is 111 rounds. So I still need, well, 42 because I only began seven, the 17th round. I don't anticipate getting that done this week because, or this coming week, because I have not a lot of meetings to speak of. 
And on top of that, um, I don't expect our network to be down an entire day again. Um, yeah, I don't know how other people cope when that happens. I can just sit in it and keep looking at the computer. My only other piece of knitting is a new cast on. And I did bring along a skein of yarn. Did I drop it again? Where did it go? Oh. I dropped it on my feet. Okay. So this is out of Sandnesgaard Alpaca. This is a very Norwegian yarn heavy time for me apparently. Um, my next cast on won't be, but yeah. Anyway, and it's this blue colour which isn't as vibrant as the screen showing it. But yeah, really lovely tealy colour. And what I've cast on, and I talked about this last week because this was my reward for casting of this, is the Breine jumper. Uh, again, it actually fits me. It looks small, but it fits me. I tried it on yesterday because um, I just happened to end up with the end of the skein right where my um, rounds stopped, or oh, the beginning of my round was. So all of this was knit this week. It's a very easy pattern to remember. Uh, I am knitting the extra large size, but with wrong gauge. So uh, the pattern is by Knitting for Olive. Does it come in, all in English? It might, I don't remember, sorry. Uh, I'm not a fan of the pattern. Um, but really I don't. I'm following the extra large, which with the gauge she suggests for the extra large should have ended up giving me a bust measurement of 113 centimeters. I am 116 around. Um, but the next size up is 127 centimeters which is i mean as someone who doesn't really like a lot of e positive ease that feels like a lot of positive ease so yeah um this comes out with my gauge to around 100 did i swift something but yeah, it comes out much closer to my measurements. Um, I think it's 118 maybe centimeters, um, which is which is fine. And all lace always looks a bit crumbly and sad when before you wash it. So there you have it. Um, as with my criterion, I will be. Knitting this as a full length body, not the sleeves. The sleeves will be three quarters for both my criterion and this. Um, my criterion is knit on three millimeter needles, while this is knit on 3.5 millimeter needles, and you can really tell the difference. Not least because the gauge of this is 20 centimeters, oh, 20 stitches per 10 centimeters, and the other is. 25, 26, around that. Um, so yeah. And now that I'm down to just knitting the body, it does go faster. <coughs> Unfortunately, the needle is a bit long, so I'm just, but I'm just doing half a magic loop. So I instead of having thread out or the uh, needle out in both sides and only have it out here at 
the beginning of the round and then just have the smaller loop. It works fine for me. I could have just changed that to cable. I was lazy. I will probably magic loop the uh, well, not probably. I will magic loop the sleeves as well. So yeah. A lot of knitting in my future. <laughs> um, at least this breaks it up a bit, whereas the other one is just plain stock in it. But yeah. It'll be fab when it's done, both of them. Of course, this is alpaca, so it's squishy and soft. I do have another knit coming up that I've already found a yarn for. That's to say I'm I don't have enough of the contrast colour. Um but I can easily get it. Um and that's because I'm going to test knit a new pattern for Cy Norman, who has a book coming out uh, in December. As far as I know the pre-order hasn't gone up yet, but I am getting that book because I missed out on a one I love her designs, that's why I like to test knit for her. And I missed out on a test knit for a really really lovely jumper that's in that book. So yeah. Christmas present for myself? Because I have already bought so much for my upcoming birthday that I can't keep saying that it's uh, birthday presents. <laughs> Oops. There's a pandemic on. Now, sewing. I feel like, I feel like it's been five minutes of talking to you. Oh well, it, it always takes longer than I think, but you know. I am so in love with this fabric and I'm thinking about getting more and making a Sorel, not a Sorel, Sienna long skirt out of it and making a white blouse to wear with it. Um, in my mind it's a white shirt or white Gibson girl blouse. Except that I really don't like having anything tied around my neck, so it can't be a Gibson girl blouse. Uh, but yeah, I really love this fabric, which is from... What are they called? Six Flax Fabric? Six... Six something. Um, and it is really, really lovely. The pattern I'm making here is the Passy, Passy Floor Dress, Jacket Dress. Uh, by Deer and Doe. And I made the, uh, I made the shirt which I showed you last time. And now I'm making the dress. And so far I have done everything except I need to sew the side seams and yes that is a pocket flap flapping about pocket pocket bag flapping about I had sewn the initial uh, seam of the sides for both sides I'm doing them French uh, with French seams and I was just trying it on you know putting it on over my the clothes I was wearing um, let me just demonstrate if I can figure out there we go I was just putting it on because there is a full dress here and and I just ran my hands down my sides and then it dawned on me there are no pockets. One of the greatest crimes to womankind if we ignore all the other things. 
is not putting pockets in dresses. That's good. There were no pockets. So I ripped it out and found my trusted pocket back um, pattern piece and they now have, well they will have pockets. This is a remnant from a um, Nani Eero, it's a double gauze, so it's very light and very soft and It would be better if I had enough for the actual, for, uh, out of the actual fabric. Um, I could have, seeing as I want to make a long skirt out of this fabric and need to um, purchase said fabric if I want to do that. And there is, well there was yesterday still some available. It, uh, I could have just done them out of that, but that would mean waiting. So, black pockets it is. I will, um, I need to top stitch this so that it doesn't poke around. And it's all done. But yeah, this is where I ended up. And actually, no, I won't need to top stitch because I only did a two. Eight so long. I already took care of this. I need to learn to trust what past for you did, even if she did mess up and not she made pockets so yeah when that's done I need to make the sleeves which will be full length sleeves again uh, with cups and I will do the bottom hem which also will sew down the lining for the front because the uh, front part is fully lined so it'll look like something like this if I can get it to lay correctly come on something like and that way with the covered seams of the, uh, when you include the covered seams from the French seams, I'll also do French seams on the sleeves. There will be no exposed seams anywhere. Um, the French seams for the size is a suggestion in the pattern, but it does just tell you to finish your seams. which. I guess it's fine for most people, but when they say that you can also use this as a coat, which I mean you could, um, and I probably could as a layering piece. Um, having exposed seams just doesn't seem right. So yeah, we'll have to look in. We won't have to worry about that when we do French seams. Unlikely anyone's going to look in my armpits anyway, but you know, I like to do it. So yeah, that is everything. I have my next sewing planned, I have my next knitting planned, I just need to work on stuff. Anyway, that is all I have to share with you this week. Um, are you getting sick of seeing my criterion? Because I am a bit. Uh, 
don't get me wrong, I love it. But stocking net on three millimeter needles when you're my size takes a long time. So yeah. I like to alternate between knitting a bit on my criteria and then knitting a bit on my bine. Oh, and if you're wondering, bine it means fern. Just in case you don't speak Danish. Because apparently not all people do. Um, I don't know if I think this looks like a fern pattern, but you know, that's what it's called. And I'm taking this, the measurements for this from my Roma, no, Sandnesgarn lacy top that is actually meant for silk mohair, but I made out of a pack of silk because it is a nice layering piece and working from home means I wear the same soft those all the time. I miss getting dressed sometimes because my things aren't getting the wear that they deserve just because I have nowhere to go. So yeah. Um, oh, sorry. I have a whole new wardrobe. I already have a whole new wardrobe for when we go back to work again, whatever that is. So, yep. I'll leave you to it and I'll knock a couple of more rounds out on my criteria criterion and watch Lucy Worsley talk about history's biggest royal ships because I'm behind on that series and I love her. I adore her. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye.